Today we're going to walk from Miami to Miami Beach and then all the way down to South Point Park. We're going to see some of the same locations and landmarks we saw from the boat, but this time from the land perspective. It is going to be a little over eight miles over the course of two days. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. First, we're gonna take an Uber to our startup location, which is going to be the Brickle area. Brickle City Center, to be exact. Little Havana always brings back memories of our beginnings in the United States. The strip mall where I bought my first guitar, for example. Some things are about the same. Some have changed a lot. We're approaching the more historic part of Little Havana, which can also be considered the touristy part. This is where the tour bus will drop you off, where you can take one of the food tours or whatnot. Don't forget to have an ice cream at Azúcar. We're approaching the high-rise condos of the Brickle area of downtown. As soon as we go under I-95, we are in Brickle. Here we are, Brickle City Center, opened in 2017, and I remember it very well because that was the year I quit my day job to pursue a career on YouTube. Well, hello everybody and greetings from the bustle and hustle of Brickle in Miami, Florida. This is uh, Brickle City Center here which is a huge complex. I'm sure you've seen it before in my videos. But we just took an Uber here, and from here we're gonna do something that very few people do. We just wanna walk, walk. People walk a lot in this area, but not where we're going. I literally saw all this being built. A couple of floors higher every day during my daily commute. Some of these are even newer. Coming up, the southern terminus of US 41, the Tamiami Trail. Well, here's the plan. We're going to try to walk all the way to Miami Beach. How about that? The first we're here downtown, Brickle. We're going to take Brickle Avenue North, cross the bridge over the Miami River, and then check out downtown. But look at all these skyscrapers. I mean, Miami is unrecognizable these days. This is where US 41 meets US 1, Brickle Avenue. And we're ready to continue straight. Oh, we have the green light, so let's hurry up. If we were to continue straight, we would end up at where I used to work. I had never noticed the diagonal crosswalks, a la Shibuya. Yeah, and when I say unrecognizable for Miami, I mean, Miami has looked like this for a while. But as someone who basically grew up here, this city has changed a lot over the past 20 years or so. Here's the first Presbyterian church, and I'll tell you the story just in case you didn't get to watch the previous video. It is a historic landmark built in 1949, and probably the last piece of land not to be repurposed to build a high-rise. There is a proposal, however, to build a skyscraper in the parking lot behind it. Very curious, it is like a church within a church. Here's the old chapel. Here's the larger nave. Well, the first Miami Presbyterian Church. Is it Presbyterian, right? Yeah. This may be the one building to survive the building boom here in Miami because it is considered a, a, a national historical landmark. Otherwise, they would have torn it down already and built a, a skyscraper. Um, we're going to continue. Well, look at that. I had never noticed that. The columns are like the heads on Easter Island. Probably an homage to the Tequesta people who inhabited these lands almost 2,000 years ago. They discovered a bunch of artifacts when they were building this. Now we're going to cross the drawbridge over the Miami River onto downtown proper. 
These two skyscrapers are the Epic on the left and the brand new Aston Martin on the right. And this one, this one is Icon Brickle. That is a fabulous building, the swimming pool all the way up there. There used to be a lot of vultures up there, so I wonder what they did to scare them away. Down here, the Miami Circle, the main archaeological site they discovered while excavating. And that's the Manuel Carbonell column and statue depicting a Tequesta family. And the Miami River Mega Yachts. Don't you get a little sense of deja vu when you see all this? I mean, if you saw the last video, that is. That's the iconic Miami Tower, which used to be known as the Centrust Building. Hey, J.W. Marriott Marquis. The Aston Martin, still under construction. Well, that skinny skyscraper back there, that's the Aston Martin, and I thought it was finished by now. But I guess it is still under construction. I mean, they're almost finished with it. It, it looks almost done. And um, just for context, we're here on, on a Tuesday. It is 2 p.m. And um, I got a notification so I can see the date. It's uh, December 19th. I imagine in about two hours, this place is going to get a lot busier. That over there with all the condos, that's Fisher Island, only accessible by ferry. And we've got dolphins. It is so difficult to predict when they're going to re-emerge. Well, this was certainly unexpected. What are the chances, right? I mean, I've seen manatee in this area before, but never dolphins. They seem to like to show off. Such a beautiful day on Biscayne Bay today. The sculpture on this side of the Miami River is called The Lady of Miami by Haitian-American artist Edouard Duval Carrier. On the other side, at the Cuesta Point on Brickle Key, El Sentinela del Rio by Cuban-American Manuel Carbonell. The Aston Martin, by the way, the second tallest building in the city at 817 feet and the tallest residential building south of New York City. Well, onward we go. Well, that was really cool. We saw dolphins at the mouth of the Miami River. And now um, I'm dark in comparison with, uh, with the background, but this is Biscayne Bay. We're gonna pass by Bayside and then we're gonna continue. Here's a monument dedicated to the thousands of Cubans who have perished in the Straits of Florida. It is called the Liberty Column. This one looks like it's going to be replaced soon by something new and shiny. The Intercontinental, the Miami Center, the Southeast Financial Center, which is the tallest all-office building, and the Challenger Memorial. Well, yeah, some old skyscrapers, some new ones, but this is an old structure here. 
I mean, I believe this was here when I arrived in Miami 35 years ago. And this is the Challenger Memorial, you know, dedicated to, to the space shuttle. And uh, I'm sure there's a plaque somewhere explaining what it is. And we'll find it, I promise. Here's Southeast Tower again on the right. Did you know, because of its design, most floors have nine corner offices, with the top 12 floors having as many as 16? Fun fact! There's the Metro Mover, which is free and automated, and operates in downtown and Brickell. Ooh, I wonder what that is! It's a delivery robot. The robot, by the way, is not a self-driving vehicle. They are all remotely piloted. Still, a pretty cool idea to navigate the often congested streets of downtown. One Biscayne Tower from the 1970s and 50 Biscayne from the mid-2000s. Well, we are now walking on iconic Biscayne Boulevard. Going north, that's Bayfront Park, that's downtown. And we're going north. Well, yeah, we're filming this December 2023, right before Christmas. And that would be Bayfront Park. We're not gonna stop at Bayfront Park or Bayside today. We did another video where we visited last winter. We need to focus on the task at hand, otherwise we won't make it to Miami Beach before sundown. Hmm, Cuba under the stars. An immersive Cuban experience. Let's have an immersive Miami experience instead. Approaching the entrance here to Bayside Marketplace. We're not gonna go into Bayside, we've been there before. Um, will this be Bolivar? I think so. Yeah, Simon Bolivar. And this is the torch of freedom because we're approaching Freedom Tower here uh, coming soon as well. Did I say Torch of Freedom? It is actually a Torch of Friendship. <laughs> freedom Tower, Friendship, you know, the Libertador, the Freedom Bolivar, you, you get confused. Freedom Tower seems to be undergoing renovations. And here's the Torch of Friendship. And here we get to peek into the Cuban experience. And here we have a statue dedicated to Juan Ponce de Leon. It was donated by the government of Spain in 1976 and rededicated on May 22, 1995. As I mentioned last week, Freedom Tower is where all the Cuban refugees were processed in the 1960s. It is nowadays a museum. to the rumbling noise of the city. It was on a building that no longer exists right around here that the famous Copperton Girl billboard once stood. Well, this is the old entrance to the Port of Miami here, Port Miami. And I should know because I used to work there in the early 90s. Nowadays they have a tunnel, but I think like for hazardous materials and oversized trucks, this is still the main entrance. Which kind of sucked because you had to get off the expressway and drive through downtown Miami like for, for you know trucks and stuff. That's why they built a tunnel. And here's another bit of history. Well, we continue walking north here on Biscayne Boulevard. I forgot to, to, to track our walk with my, with my uh, watch and my phone. But we've done like, I want to say like two miles already. Feels more than that. We're crossing the railroad tracks now. And here's the arena. What's it called these days? Caseya Center? now called Caseya Center, better than FTX, but I was so used to American Airlines Arena. 
now approaching an area I haven't been to in a very long time. And there's art. Lots of art. One thousand Museum and 900 Biscayne Bay. Seventh and tenth tallest buildings in the city as of 2024. Apparently, all this is a temporary exhibition called A Bridge of Light by renowned Costa Rican sculptor Jorge Jiménez de Heredia. Well, now we're gonna go into Marie Ferre, Maurice Ferrer Park. Wasn't he like a commissioner or something like that? Actually, he was Miami's mayor from 1973 to 1985, but that was before my time here. I remember the name from when he was a commissioner in the 1990s. There's the main channel, only one cruise ship today. Here's another look at downtown from a slightly different perspective. And here's another work. This one not by Jimenez de Heredia, this one is called Looking into my dreams, a Wilda, a work by Spanish sculptor Jaume Plensa. We've seen two other public works by Plensa in our travels, one in Des Moines, Iowa, and one in Calgary. They also consisted of a huge head, this one made out of polyester, resin, and marble dust. Here's a better look at the main channel, going out to the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the Paris Art Museum. I think we should visit sometime. You know, we had never been through here. This is the, the Paris Art Museum of Miami. Pretty cool architecture. I thought there was a route here by the water, but we're gonna have to backtrack all the way back to Biscayne Boulevard. Hmm. The dogs and cats walkway. It's totally a thing. Check it out. Pretty cool. I don't know if I like all the colors, but it's very artistic. Yeah, I think the only well, hello. I think the other, the only way to take the Venetian Causeway is to cut through Biscayne Boulevard. So that's what we're going to do. Hello, Fifi. <laughs> Flagami Street Cat, that's our neighborhood. This one is called the Everglades Dog. And here we have a, a, a Dalmatian from Croatia. Firefighter that Dalmatian, a bombero. And let's see this one has a beret. <laughs> oh, Miami Police Department. There you go.
Here we are now at the corner of Biscayne Boulevard and 13th Street, home to the historic Sears Tower and the Adrian Arched Performing Arts Center. This was the first Art Deco building in the county, dating back to 1929, which predates the famous Art Deco hotels of Miami Beach. Sears Tower is nowadays part of the Performing Arts Center. I believe the only way to walk across Biscayne Bay is through the Venetian Causeway, which follows the original route of the Collins Bridge, which was a wooden two and a half mile structure built in 1913. The non-bridge portions of the causeway are the man-made Venetian islands, created by materials which came from the dredging of the bay. Here kind of begins the somewhat crazy part of our adventure today. The walking to Miami Beach part. Up until now, we've just been walking in the downtown. And now we're gonna walk the causeway. Let me look at my app here real quick, how much. Well, I, I, I actually put a, a, a destination in Miami Beach. It says 3.9 miles. It's probably three miles to, to the edge of Miami Beach. And then, and then, I mean, it's gonna get dark early today. So we're probably gonna head back home. But this is such a beautiful walk here. It's uh, yeah, it's kind of, kind of nice to get out of the house from time to time. That's our destination, Miami Beach. I believe that is called Joya Beach Restaurant and Beach Club. The first island is called Biscayne Island. Approaching the toll booth, here we have some information about the original Collins Bridge. Here's one of the most iconic buildings from the 1980s, ahead of its time, 1000 Venetian Way. Let me tell you something, back in the day, this must have been one of the most iconic buildings in Miami. And it still kind of is. Let's continue. We're crossing our next bridge onto San Marco Island. Let me tell you, I like this one. I like this one a lot. It is definitely a different Miami from the one we live day by day. This one seems to be undergoing renovations. Check it out, a vacant lot with a little bit of a view. This one seems to be brand new. Now we're about to cross another bridge onto San Marino Island. And that's Hibiscus Island across the bay. And that's Palm Island a little farther south.
and we have made it. I almost, I almost uh, tripped. And Miami Beach, man. Miami Beach. And check out that view of downtown Miami behind us. We have walked a pretty long way and we still have a little bit to go. There is something that becomes evident once the music ends, and that's how noisy the city is, no matter how idyllic the setting may be. We're getting close. The next one is the Lido Island. That's a nice one too, by the way. That's the Philip Frost Estate on Star Island. I really like this one. I'm going to find out how much it is. Let me tell you, I have really good taste. According to Zillow, 11 and a half million. <laughs> we're gonna have to make a lot more videos. <laughs> well, what can I say? We're almost, almost at Miami Beach. I think this is a little more than we bargained for, but it's been fun. We've done like five miles already. This one, by the way, is called Rivo Alto Island. Miami Beach, man. Yeah, our destination is on site, Miami Beach. We've got one more island to go. Come a long way, and we're running out of daylight real quick here. And we made one mistake. We didn't bring any water. We thought there would be like a market or a bar somewhere along the way, but none that we could find. This one is called Bell Isle, by the way. It is getting a lot more densely populated around here. This is our last bridge onto Miami Beach. Yep, perfect lighting, beautiful afternoon here as we arrive at the island of Miami Beach, officially. Big anchor is here on the Intracoastal. Well, found the bar here in Miami Beach, had an IPA, El Farito IPA, by the way, very good one. And, uh, and now as the sun sets, we're gonna get an Uber. <laughs> and uh, I think this is it for today's adventure. Today's adventure may be over, but we're only halfway to South Beach, so this is not over yet. The best may be yet to come. We just ran out of daylight today. By the way, did you notice the Uber driver is going back the same way we came? It's a brand new day, and a brand new year for that matter. A month and a half after our trek from Miami to Miami Beach, 
And now we're going to the exact point where we left off, to continue all the way to the southern tip of the barrier island. As a long-time Miami resident, sometimes you don't realize how different the vegetation and even the light here is compared to other parts of the country. As I've been traveling more and more over the past few years, I realize what a unique place this is. It is the third tallest skyline in the country, after New York and Chicago. It may not be the greatest idea just 5 miles east of the airport in the direct path of the runway, but what do I know? It does look pretty. And here we are. This park was closed the last time we were here, so let's check it out. Well, hello everybody. It is now, I don't know, a couple months later. We're still here at Sunset Harbor, Miami Beach. It is a brand new day, beautiful day today in Florida. And today we're gonna continue our walk. Um, we don't know exactly where we're gonna go, but let's see. Let's see what we stumble upon here in the city of Miami Beach. Actually, let's go to the exact spot where we, where we left off the last time. And this is about it. Uh, when we were here a couple months ago, this was our uh, last point. This is where we took the Uber, and this is where we told today the Uber to drop us off. At Stillsville a Fish Bar, we had an IPA, and that was the end of our day. But now today we continue it. Uh, let me tell you, um, we're here. Uh, it's February 3rd today, and this is February is probably the best month of the year to be in Miami, weather-wise. I guess Miami Beach's architecture has always been cool from the Art Deco hotels of the 1930s to this modern condominiums. Well, if you're somewhat familiar with Miami Beach, you probably know where we're going. It is kind of the, the original pedestrian street. That street has been pedestrian since... Since before pedestrians, these streets were uh, popular. <laughs> yes, we're going to Lincoln Road, one of the most unique shopping districts in the world. It was one of the nation's first pedestrian malls, opening November 28, 1960. That building has Brito painted all over it. And of course, it is the Romero Brito Fine Art Gallery. Here we go, Art Deco, the Colony Theater, built by Paramount Pictures in 1935. Well, first thing we did, and uh, we're here by the Apple Store, and uh, Vision Pro just came out, so the first thing I did, <laughs> I did a test of the Vision Pro, just in case, and uh, let me tell you, it exceeded my expectations. I thought it was all, all gonna be hype, but we'll see. <laughs> now let's go find something to eat. Here we have a transformer statue. Oh, decisions, decisions. Tasca Paella here looks pretty good, but let's see. Let's see what else there is. It is kind of early for lunch. Vanna 1957. Hmm, very tempting. Ooh, lobster Shack. I've heard of this place. Well, cheers, we'll begin with an ice cold IPA. We're getting lobster rolls and the clam chowder. Mm. Clam chowder is really good. Let's see the lobster. Mm. Well, what can I say? That was a pretty good lobster roll. Expensive, but good. But lobster rolls are usually expensive. We have some pigeons. Hello, pigeons. 
check out the Monarch Butterflies and the famous Lincoln Theatre, which is no longer a theatre. Let's keep on walking east towards the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the Miami Beach Community Church, founded in 1921 on land donated by Carl Fisher, who was one of the early promoters of development in Miami Beach. Let's keep on going. That was anticlimactic. I thought it was gonna be like a, like a wind chime or something. Check it out, street art. This is what I wanted to do, you know, play music on the street and they have a corn in the, I don't know why. Oh, look at the statue from here. Now crossing Washington Avenue. Duck tours, we gotta do that sometime. And here we have some renovated old school hotels. This actually looks very similar to the way it did in the late 80s. Oh, look at that, collusion. That used to be a famous clock that would tell the time and the temperature. But it is no longer working. Winter in South Florida. This is what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I wanted to go all the way to the sand, I mean, and to, to the water, but it's such a beautiful day that we're just gonna do it in long pants because <laughs> we didn't think we were gonna do this. Oh yeah, this is one of those iconic lifeguard houses here in Miami Beach. All of them are different, they have several ones, and this one of course says Lincoln Road because we came in through Lincoln Road. Beautiful color on the water. Here we are, the amazing turquoise waters of Miami Beach. But don't be, don't be a fool that water is cold. At least for South Florida, I do. Let's head south on the beach walk, which goes by the back of all these hotels, until we get to Ocean Drive. Yep, nice hotel. We're approaching the end of, uh, of, or the beginning, shall I say, depends which way you look at it, of Ocean Drive, 15th Street, so we're gonna take a detour from the, from the trail here. Now this is it, 15th Street. This is where we're gonna deviate from the beach walk. 
and going to the mainland here. Ocean Drive begins going that way after this building here. That way, right? this is either the beginning or the end of Ocean Drive, no matter which way, you know, you look at it. And um, this is a shopping mall here. This has never... Yeah, I don't think this was ever super successful, maybe for a little bit. Then the pandemic was the last nail on the coffin. Royal Palm, very iconic, and this, they try to make like one of these, you know, entertainment malls, but that never quite worked out. I mean, it's it's been there since probably the late 90s. How do I know? Because I used to work right across the street. There's a there's an empty uh, lot there. There used to be like a kind of worn down hotel, and there was a shop. And that worked there for a couple of years. Here in South Beach. We're talking mid-90s. Yeah, this is it. They never built anything else in this lot. Oh, parcel for sale. For sale. How many millions do you think this corner lot here might be worth? Quite a few. We are now on Collins Avenue, but not for long. That's where we want to go next, Española Way. This is the site of the famous Cameo Theater. This is, by the way, one of the epicenters of all the action here on South Beach. And here's the front of the Cameo. This narrow pedestrian street coming up is part of Española Way, lined with restaurants of many different cuisines. Some relatively new, like this Havana 1957, which seems to be a chain these days. Some have been here for decades. It's a cacophony of sounds and smells. Well, of course, this is one of those original pedestrian streets here in Miami Beach, and uh, you know, full of restaurants. We, have, we used to have a couple of favorites around here. Let's see if they're, if they're still around. Osteria Romana has been here forever, it seems. Oh. Gelato Italiano. Mmm, ice cream. Gelato. It's really good, actually. For $10 plus tax, it better be good. It is very pretty here. Let's go back to Ocean Drive. For a nice, strong espresso, let's check this place out. Oh, they have food too. All right, cheers. I gotta have my, my caffeine at some point in the day and uh, they were a little like confused in there. <laughs> the order in front of us, it was like, they had to redo it like three times. So it took a long time, but cheers. We're back on Ocean Drive. I remember when this was a regular two-way street, and I kind of miss that, but I understand things change. This, of course, as we walk south, this is the most famous Art Deco district here of South Beach. And, uh, you know, they have preserved all these uh, old hotels, I believe from the, like, the 1920s or 30s. I'm not sure. Definitely 1930s. If you've noticed, Miami Beach has increasingly become more touristy and outrageously expensive for sure. It no longer is the playground of our youth, but nothing ever is, I suppose. 
I was actually here to witness the rebirth of South Beach. Back in the late 80s, it was still kind of depressed, seedy, and a little bit of a sleepy town. But throughout the 1990s, more nightclubs started to open, and in subsequent decades, it became what it is today. In fact, it's become so over the top that the city of Miami Beach wants to quell down some of the late night debauchery, imposing earlier last calls, earlier meaning like 2 a.m., not the all night long party in this area is famous for. All right, there's a famous one, The Tide. Free water. It's been in several movies. Some people behind me selling something. I don't know what it is. It's the Victor. Yeah, the Victor is a nice one. That's the house that used to belong to designer Gianni Versace, built in 1930. It is, nowadays, a boutique hotel, restaurant, and event venue. Ooh, nice rooftop bar. There's the Clevelander, very iconic, being there many times in the 1990s, and it has changed in some ways. Like everything else, I suppose, it was more open back then. It didn't really have a designated entrance, so you could just wander in. All right, the Clevelander, iconic place, but now we have another iconic place here coming up. And it's another one of those places where you would make a long line to take a picture. And that is the South Beach Thermometer and Clock. And you can see it right there, February 3rd, 2024. It is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 75 degrees in February. Mango's Tropical Cafe is another one of those places that has been here for over 30 years. And I remember the early days when the sound system was really bad, but it was the one Latin club on South Beach. They did have a really good reggae band as well. Let's walk across the street and come over to this side. It is just a cacophony. Yes, I like that word. Of the music and dialogue and the aromas from all the street side restaurants. Say hello to my little friend. Very cool. Wet Willis will always have a special place in our hearts, our old stomping grounds. And I don't mean to sound too nostalgic, but this was one of our hangouts, probably 25, 30 years ago. And it is actually really cool that some of these places are still here. They can't pass by here without mentioning the chainsaw scene from the movie Scarface. Those three round windows will forever live in our collective pop culture minds. Isn't this nice? It is a CVS nowadays, and before that it was a Johnny Rockets. I have never actually walked back here, but in one of those apartments, that's where it happened, you know, the, the chainsaw scene from Scarface. Let's continue. Here's looking back north one last time towards the world famous Ocean Drive.
Now we're entering an area called South of Fifth. This is Fifth Street. And uh, we're still on Ocean Drive, but it's not the, the, it's still Art Deco district, but it's not the pedestrian, you know, with all the restaurants on the, on the side of the street. Not as many anyway. We're gonna see if we can make it all the way south to the southern tip of Miami Beach. Of course, we've been there, it's called uh, South Point Park and the South Point Pier. Oh yeah, we're reaching uh, the southernmost point here in Miami Beach. A lot, a lot of newer buildings in this area. All the skyscrapers are down here at South Point. Time for an adult beverage. Well, we've walked almost seven miles, so we've earned our second IPA. Very refreshing. Well, that was very refreshing. Now let's uh, go to South Point, finally. We've been blessed with such great weather today. No wonder tourists from all over the world, especially the colder parts, flock here every winter. And uh, we've made it to South Point. We've been here before, back there you can see downtown Miami, but we're going to the South Point Pier where we're gonna be able to see all this, including Miami Beach, a lot better. That's Fisher Island across the, the, the government cut here, by the way. Here's the view from a slightly higher perspective. This is South Point Pier. We're going to see great views of the beach and pretty much all around us. Check it out. Hi. Miami Beach, man. February 3rd, 2024, winter in South Florida. Originally, Fisher Island used to be part of Miami Beach, but in 1905, this channel called Government Cut was dredged, creating this inlet, the main channel entering the port of Miami. That first cruise ship, by the way, is the icon of the seas. As of this filming, the largest cruise ship in the world. Busy afternoon here at Government Cut. Lots of recreational traffic and a lot of wake. Whoa, look at that. And here we have an airplane advertising something called Malibu Barbie Cafe. Hmm. That's the thrill ride that comes out of Bayside. And someone's got a monkey. Maybe we can linger long enough so we can see the cruise ships come out. They all sail between around 4 and 6 p.m. There's the icon of the seas. Well, now we're gonna continue on this boardwalk going east because I'm not sure exactly how far it goes. Let's see, let's find out together. Let me tell you, I kind of wish I would have bought and brought my bathing suit because... Yeah, even though the water is probably on the colder side, it's still very appealing. 
Oh, this is the iconic steakhouse Smith and Walensky. This place is happening. If there was room at the bar, maybe we could stop for a drink, but we're gonna keep going. I have another place in mind. Here's yet another view of downtown, from a slightly different angle. Here we got some art. It looks like a lighthouse. It is actually called South Point Lighthouse, and although it's not really used for navigation, it is meant to be a welcoming beacon to visitors of Miami Beach. And here we have something different, a floating billboard. We are now by the Miami Beach Marina, and there's a place here I want to check out. Miami Beach Marina. Oh, yeah. Here we are, Monty's. We used to go to the one in Coconut Grove, closer to home, but it's the same thing, except for the fact that this one has a swimming pool. We got mojitos, and there's great ambience at the bar, but as soon as we saw a spot with the view open up, we took advantage. Oh, well, that's where we were, right there. We're gonna go back to South Point, see if we can at least catch one of the cruise ships leaving port. Well, that mojito was great. Exactly what we needed. It's, it's, big. it's, it's hot, it's getting hot now in the afternoon. Even though it's in the high 70s, it, it feels hotter just because it is so sunny. Uh, what a beautiful day, what, what such great weather today. Anyway, we're gonna see if we can get to see one of the cruise ships leaving port here, should happen soon. And then that's it. Here comes the carnival. Well, here it comes. I'm, I'm really glad we waited long enough to be able to see at least one cruise ship coming out of the port. Port of Miami, cruise capital of the world. I'd like to see the icon come out. It looks very futuristic, but I don't know if we want to wait that long. That lobster roll got metabolized hours ago. I used to not like cruises all that much, but it's been almost 20 years. Maybe we should hop on one of those this year. Have someone else at the wheel for a change. It looks like everybody's having such a great time. There's a Royal Caribbean coming. The Fisher Island Ferry. That's a lot of smoke coming out of the ferry. It is slowly approaching. The paramotor. That seems to be a fun hobby. And the cruise ship is almost here. It is the independence of the seas. The Royal Caribbean crowd seems to be a little more subdued. Not the rowdy party atmosphere of Carnival. can say is bon voyage. Bye -bye. 
Very cool. They even have a climbing wall. Very cool. That's it for real. I think now we're going home. And with that, we're saying goodbye to Miami Beach. For now. Until the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Oh, the icon of the seas is coming out now. I'm riding, riding in my arms.